Hello and welcome to another Library 101. In today's video, we are going to go over Friends of the Library Groups versus Library Foundations, but focusing on the foundation. Our library development staff get a lot of questions about the differences between having a Friends of the Library Group and a Library Foundation. This video is meant to clear up a bit of the confusion about the roles that these two important entities play in the life of a library. This Library 101 is important because the line between what a friends group does and what the Library Foundation does is a very fine one. When a library has both, it can be difficult to differentiate between one group's job and the others. The tutorial is broken into two parts, so we can look at exactly what the friends of the library do and what the Library Foundation does without it being too confusing. We also didn't want to bog anyone down with too much information at once. So covering one aspect and then the other will make retention easier and you'll be able to find the information at a later date faster. So what is a library foundation? According to the American Library Association, a library foundation is a separate legal entity formed for the purpose of enhancing and expanding library programs and services. Its primary function is to secure financial and in-kind donations for programs, services, collections, and capital projects. Though a foundation can use its money for these types of projects listed, in our experience, a foundation is used almost solely for capital projects. Why are foundations important? A foundation is important because it allows for things that the library cannot do, such as be the vehicle for donations to be moved through, Foundations can accept gifts for restricted and unrestricted purposes, like donations of cash, stocks, real estate, and life insurance. Foundations have the ability to invest their funds in order to maximize the benefit to their library. A library foundation takes care of a library system as a whole, rather than having a separate foundation for each branch, like one might see with friends groups. How do you create one? Much like a friends group, it takes time and determination to start a foundation. However, there are more key legal steps to begin with than there are when starting a friends group. First, a board of directors and officers need to be selected, articles of incorporation and bylaws prepared, and tax exempt status with the IRS needs to be applied for. These aspects need to be set up and finalized before work as a foundation can begin. Additionally, public funds cannot be used to organize and establish a foundation. Those that wish to establish a foundation will need to secure private funding to cover the legal and document filing fees. After the foundation is established, their purpose is to support the goals and priorities of the library and to work closely with the library administration in the planning and funding of projects that benefit users and potential users. Much like the Friends Group, library employees cannot be on the board for the foundation. Likewise, foundation board members cannot be on the library board. There can be a liaison between the two though because they should work closely together to achieve the goals of the library. If all of this doesn't seem too bad, there's a great resource from the American Library Association United for Libraries called Establishing a Library Foundation, Planning, Persistence, and Progress. The information for starting a foundation was pulled from this document, and it goes into all of the details of starting a library foundation that weren't covered here. Your library development specialist can also help with this and put you in touch with foundations from libraries similar to your own. Some highlights of the differences between the two types of groups. One difference that wasn't mentioned in the previous video was the type of board members that each group has. The Friends of Library group tend to have board members that are passionate about the library, but also have the time to dedicate to volunteering. The Foundation's board members tend to be influential members of the community in order to raise money for the Foundation. They typically have less time to volunteer, but have different skill sets to get donations to the Foundation. The types of events that the two put on can be quite different as well. For example, the Foundation generally puts on events that cost more and charge a fee for attendance whereas the Friends Group put on events that are free to the public or have a free will donation attached to it. The look and feel of advocacy efforts are different for both groups. Because the board members of a foundation and those who donate to it generally have more pull in the community, they also have a more direct avenue for advocacy for the library to the elected officials of the community. 
Whereas the friends group doesn't generally have that direct pull, but they do have the wider recognition of the community because the volunteers for the friends group tend to be in different community groups as well. They can advocate for the library in a wider, less focused way, but still be heard by their community. Thank you for joining me for this bite-sized video on Library Friends Group versus Library Foundations. I encourage you to contact your library development specialist if you have any questions on how to start a library foundation. If you have any questions on this video, please email me at ndsltrain at nd.gov.